Hey, what's going on, guys? Here's another edition of the Tech Time Wasters. I mean, sysadmin, very important work-related reading links. Let's just get started. I've got a, I've got pretty good response to some of these videos, so I'm going to keep making them. So first up is a New Yorker article about how small businesses are coming back. Uh, it's really nice, especially in the tech world. I mean, really what you see is like consolidation of infrastructure, small companies being bought up by huge ones. This also happened around the time of prohibition with beers. And, you know, at some point, I think there were something like five breweries that owned most of the American market. And now, you know, craft breweries just outsold Budweiser for the first time last year. Um, it's coming back. This is, you can see it's a pretty short article, but totally worth reading and it will give you some hope for the future and that small sort of decentralized things uh, seem to be working a lot better thanks to technology than huge monoliths. People don't really want that. Uh, there you go. There is hope. Second, Jasper, if you do any Python, this is probably a project that's worth hacking on. It's really nice. This is Amazon Echo, but without all the creepiness, basically. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, Amazon Echo is this super, I mean... It looks quite convenient. You know, it's uh, basically a microphone and little computer that sits in your house and listens to everything you do and say, and then exports those things, or maybe not, we don't know because it's not open source, to Amazon servers where everything's analyzed and tracked. And So it's basically like a bug in your house. It also happens to have some features like, it's what you imagine when you think, oh, it's a smart home. I can just say, hey, house, please add milk to my shopping list or whatever. That's sort of what it does. You know, what's the weather in Baltimore right now? It can look things up on the web, you know, scrape web pages, uh, tell you if you have Facebook updates or something stupid like that. But it seems like a really useful tool. And the problem is that Amazon Echo is incredibly creepy. So if you'd like sort of an open source version that you control where nothing's going onto somebody else's servers to be analyzed, uh, and where you're basically guaranteed that you know how the thing works and it's not listening in on you um, and it really is just voice activated and not doing anything creepy then jasperproject.github.io um, it's really cool it's very simple to hack on uh, I think it just requires a Raspberry Pi I'm actually about to get my Raspberry Pi back from a client which means I'm going to start hacking on this myself. You just need a Raspi, some speakers that plug into it, and um, a mic that works. And they've got a hardware list for you there. But you can see the developer API is basically you just list some keywords and that it should respond to, and then write functions that it should carry out as a result of those commands. Very simple. Mathematics and sex. It's pretty awesome. This is a really entertaining presenter. It's a TED talk, so forgive me. Yeah, it's really clever, funny talking about why math is cool and modeling things that maybe uh, haven't been modeled before or t sort of taking a lot of these soft sciences that have been sort of, the, you know, sociology, psychology, etc., and adding, you know, math and legitimate measurement tools. Next up, a comparison of security in OpenBSD, OpenBSD versus FreeBSD. Uh, I like FreeBSD. I'm, no, I'm not an expert on any BSD at the moment, although I hope to be soon. And by soon, I mean, you know, in the next five years of using it. The deal is, you know, OpenBSD is very code review and security focused. I mean, their, their focus is really code quality. And you can see from the sort of table of contents here, it's a pretty decent look at, I mean, this guy has basically filtered out all the resources, you know, from forums, from spec sheets, from, you know, what the projects say about themselves and mailing lists and emails with people. And compares security features in OpenBSD versus FreeBSD. So you'll see some similarities, you'll see some differences, and, you know, things like ASRL, um, ASLR, like, oh, you misspelled it there, um, which is address space layout randomization, you know, so like if you can arbitrarily start looking at memory after an exploit, it makes it much harder to detect where important processes are running because they change each time, on and on and on. So that's stuff I sort of expected, but the really cool thing about it was um, PF. I actually didn't know that OpenBSD's PF was way ahead of FreeBSD's PF, and that it was just a higher version with more features and some interesting stuff. I didn't really think of that as part of security, but obviously it is. It's a, it's a 
packet filter, you know, so it's a firewall. Um, if you don't know PF, it's probably worth checking out a BSD distro just for that if you're like a network person, because it is just so vastly, I'm no, I'm no firewall expert, but I, even I can tell it is just vastly better than IP tables net filter, worth taking a look for. And uh, if you're already interested in the BSDs, I thought this would be a, a pretty cool thing. Now there's some comments at the bottom, so the, the flames may have expanded at this point, um, but it should be interesting reading nonetheless. Just a funny joke page. Uh, <laughs> inspiration for your... <laughs> this is just like buzzword bingo, basically. Your growth hacked startups, distributed big data, web scale, cloud platform, SAS app architecture. And you can keep refreshing this and it'll just generate a stupid little... <laughs> little diagram <laughs> just perfect for those early investor <laughs> VC meetings um, a little bit of Unix Linux history what some of these weird command names stand for you know awk which is named for the authors of the program uh, grep something we use every day global regular expression print on and on extended grep egrep igrep uh, fgrep cat, you know, concatenate, or catenate, I guess. I've always been saying concatenate, but hey. On and on, all the way down to Biff, which is the name of a dog that was hanging around the lab, you know, when they were writing this. So, uh, good to know. I mean, it makes some of these things easier to remember, because some of these names really are cryptic when you're learning them, and you're like, is it grep? Is it awk? Said? What, what, what the hell's going on here? If you're interested in security, I'm going to have a couple security links in this video. Uh, I may make a security video in a, in a in a at a future time. I now work for a security company, so that's what I'm interested in and dealing with and working on and learning. So I just thought it might be interesting. I, I've heard from a lot of a lot of you guys that uh, you're in the early stages of looking for a career, which is exactly who I'm trying to talk to here. This is actually part of a larger free book on sort of offensive security, capture the flag type things. Very interesting read. I haven't read the whole thing, but this career cheat sheet that I found sort of in the middle of it or at the beginning is interesting because it ge it's a really nice roadmap for kind of getting into the security industry if that's something that you're interested in. It is definitely a separate industry from being a system administrator, but it's a pretty dynamic industry, interesting, growing like crazy, filled with some real whack jobs. I mean, some of them hilarious, some of them j just bizarre, you know almost none of them menacing. Um, but it's an interesting industry. It's growing. Whether we like it or not, it is becoming a legitimate industry. And if you want to get into it, this is probably a pretty good time to get into security. So um, this will go through, you know, what kind of employee uh, employers you're looking at, how to kind of meet people in this community and, you know, get introduced to people who can hire you, conferences to go to, links, stuff to learn, and the job roles. Uh, which is really important because even I didn't, I'm, I'm still finding new job roles in security where like I meet someone and I'm like, wow, you do that full time, just that little niche of security. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. And they make, you know, a great salary, have a fun time doing security stuff. And it's something I've never heard of. And you can already see this list has probably grown tremendously in the last five years. You know, this used to be, everyone used to do some, almost all of this during a pen test you know, maybe just 10 years ago or so. And now you've got all these specialized roles. Another, I think it, ISIS Lab is in New York. It's an unfortunate name given current news, but um, this is basically a security course in a box. If you're self-motivated and you're willing to do a lot of work and reading on your own, this is an amazing collection of stuff. I haven't gone through this course myself, but I saw it and immediately bookmarked it because it's one of those things that's like, if I'm ever looking for legit vetted content on some specific topic some this is i think where i'll find it it's got just a ton of links it's basically the all the resources that have been talked about linked to and used as part of this course slash meetup for security you can see uh it's a pretty pretty big menu of stuff with links to resources now for those of you that don't know the old the original clue train manifesto this was like a I hate saying the word meme, okay, but it was a meme. It was the thing that you linked your friends to, and people talked about it. This is really, the original Clue Train Manifesto was about how companies completely misunderstood the internet and the web, 
and we're sort of misusing it and still talking in this stuffy corporate speak. And, you know, what the web is can do and the power it has and that's sort of being ignored by these companies. Now, this came out in the 90s, I think, probably like mid-90s. I don't know when it came out. There's a new version available now that has sort of been updated, and a lot of what they warned about has sort of come true, and you now have large companies that have figured out how to fake seeming natural and personal, and that are really just trying to get you to shill their product. Like, share the fact that you just fucking ordered food with your friends. You know, something that literally no one wants to do. It's this total misunderstanding of like, oh, if we just get people to click the like button, you know, it's just this bullshit behavior that they're trying to incentivize at any cost now. And that's depressing. So this is sort of talking about how that's been misunderstood and where the web may be going and what we can kind of do to push it in the direction that we all see for it. You know, everybody sees something, some different potential for it, but it's not just a new place to have centralized content. You know, oh, great, now we don't have TV stations anymore, but we have Netflix and Hulu and two other things and suck it up if you don't like it. Re-acknowledging the web as this truly distributed thing where everyone produces things of value that other people can share and read and respond to and think about and not centralized content creation, you know, for for content consumers like you. So stop being a content consumer. Read this thing. It's pretty interesting. It's a little bit longer than the original, I think. Uh, it's written in the style of Genesis. Read this thing. It's awesome. Clue Train Manifesto Part 2. A little bit more security stuff. You can tell I was on a security kick this week. Large-scale DDoS attacks, uh, specifically reflection and amplification attacks, which we've seen this year, NTP, that kind of thing. This is someone who, I don't know where they work, but uh, anyway, they're dealing with like huge, we're talking big infrastructure, and the way these things are affected by a DDoS attack. You can see it sort of, you know, when you have a large internal infrastructure, you know, where only some of this is web facing, uh, and it's just totally taken out by some giant DDoS attack, what to do against it, mitigation, a little bit of explanation about it, uh, totally worth reading, even if you're not familiar with a lot of the services, equipment, etc., that these people are running at this scale. And it'll give you a starting point for more reading for the stuff you don't understand. Networking for system administrators. Mike Lucas, he's a guy who sort of got the reputation of someone who can take really technical things and write really great, easy to understand stuff about them. He writes a lot about the BSDs. He's a really great writer. I recommend that you uh, support him. He also does a DRM free thing where you buy like the PDF and the thing and the paper book or whatever in one bundle, DRM free. I get a lot of requests for networking and it's a huge topic. I mean, it really is a topic where a 300 page book just sort of begins to cover, you know, the, the basics of TCP IP and that's your starting point. So instead of writing that 300 page book for free right now, while I'm doing other stuff, I think linking to this really a, a big shout out to Mike Lucas. He's amazing. You should support his work. You will learn a ton from this and not be confused. It's really good stuff. So I haven't actually read this book. I've, I've read a bunch of his other books, and they are phenomenal. Okay, so if you're curious about networking, you feel like that's something you don't know much about, and you know you haven't read the TCP IP in 24 hours or worked your way through a real you know TCP IP illustrated tome or something like that, this is probably a great place to start right now, and it just came out. Go and get that. And lastly, I've been doing a little bit more work in Python lately, and... I just found this as a resource, thought it was cool, and I am linking to it. I find that the the Python tutorials on the main Python website are good, but sometimes you just need an outside, a little more informal uh, treatment of the same material, and this can help. So this is really just the whole core language, all the way to some, you know, how to structure projects, a little bit of web programming with Flask, which I really like. So this is, it's its not just the core language and what functions there are, what modules there are, what you can import, but it's a little bit about the language, a little bit about how to write code, how to structure code, how to style your code. Um, so a little bit more of that, like r practical, realistic stuff that you're going to need anyway. 
And if you're going to work on Jasper, then Python is the way to do it. Okay, this is a, becoming a long video, so that's it. I'll see you in the next one of these, and uh, I think I'm going to make a little bit more of a sysadmin specific resources video because a lot of these are sort of jokes or things I think are cool but aren't necessarily related to being a sysadmin. I found a lot of good resources lately and people have linked to some really good stuff so I'll be posting that in a separate video. Cheers!